So there's a few big AI news that just dropped. First and foremost, OpenAI is cooking up something new. Currently, it's only available to a very small number of people, so don't be surprised if you don't see it in your ChatGPT Pro quite yet. I still don't have access to it, but it's called GPT Mentions. It's basically the ability to at mention any custom GPT from ChatGPT, kind of like if you're talking to somebody on Slack or Discord. Now, we've talked about this quite a bit back in November, when OpenAI was releasing the GPT store and all the new functionality, the idea here is that basically at some point you should be able to basically have kind of an army of agents that you're calling at will to do certain preset tasks that you've programmed them to do. And it seems like this is sort of the beginning stages of that, the beta stage of that. So here's this person, Dan Shipper, who is able to use the custom GPT Notion GPT to basically save any thoughts or entries that he makes in ChatGPT into Notion using Zapier. Now we'll talk about that in just a second. Take a look at this. And then I'm going to paste it in here. Here's a journal entry um, I just wrote. So I'm just going to give it to ChatGPT, right? And, and then what I can do is normally, like I'd have to go like, you know, copy paste it into, into Notion over here. What I can do instead is I can do at Notion GPT. And this is Notion GPT is, is a little uh, uh, GPT I built. It's custom GPT uses uh, Zapier to connect to into my Notion. And so what I can do is say, hey, can you uh, summarize the journal entry above and um, put it into my journal? Right. And we're still in chat GPT. We're, this is a, we're interacting with the custom GPT from chat GPT. It creates our little summary and then it's going to, and then it's going to add that summary into notion. And it says, please confirm. Yes, go ahead. I'm going to hit confirm. So now it says the summary has been successfully added to your journal. So if I go to it, it looks like we've got it. So, and if we open it up, we've got the journal entry in here. One, it's super cool just to just to be able to connect ChatGPT to Notion, but that's that that was already a thing. The really interesting thing is we did that from inside of ChatGPT using a custom GPT that we got to we we at we at mentioned. So as you can recall, you can customize your GPTs by opening them up and going to Edit GPT, and under Configure, you have a number of options, including adding a knowledge base to your GPTs, and way at the bottom here, you have Actions. You click create new action and add various custom actions that your GPT will be able to do. Since the last time I've looked at this data out of this little thing called get help from actions GPT, which is a GPT called actions GPT by Chad GPT that will help you get familiar with how to use actions. Now, in another video, we talked about how to hook up Zapier to these custom GPTs that you produce. By the way, you can ask actions GPT how to do that. It's got pretty good explanations of how to do that. I've covered how to set that up in this video. I'll link it down below, but it's called Zapier AI Actions and GPTs. The part two of it is where we talk about specifically how to set that system up, how to find the URL that you're gonna use in your GPT actions, how to set this whole page up, etc. And I show you an example of how, for example, how to answer emails using that custom GPT. I'll link that below, but I will be doing a brand new video. So this was November 11th. Since then, a few things have changed, including a pretty big push by Zapier to be even more integrated with OpenAI. But the point is you can create these agents that just do, let's say, one thing, aka pass the butter, or for example, retrieve some specific thing from a web page, or save whatever you're talking about to a PDF file, etc. Then once you've created all those agents here in sort of the standard ChatGPT interface, kind of like the main one, you would type at, and then a menu would appear, and you can say, you know, my GPT, select the GPT you want to communicate with, and then tell it what to do. Everything's going to get executed within this window, and that thing will be completed. The reason it's going to be good is you're going to be chatting with these GPTs much like you would with employees. So for example, let's say you're doing customer service or some sort of a response to emails where you have to set meetings. And this is something that you do on a regular basis. You create some sort of a mail GPT that pulls in all your emails and summarizes them. So the first thing you would type into chat GPT would be retrieve emails with at mail GPT or whatever you call it. It does that. Then you draft the responses with your at response GPT, which is your private GPT that has all your settings, how you respond to emails, etc. Then you say set calendar reminders with at calendar GPT, which is hooked up to your Google Calendar or whatever calendar app you're using. That's going to take the data that you've just generated from the responses and just go ahead and set those into 
your calendar, again, with whatever custom settings that you've set. And then you might want to add that to some sort of a dashboard or write it to a PDF file. Just say add data with whatever GPT you would use for that. Now, I believe, and a lot of other people believe as well, that this is where OpenAI is heading. They want to be sort of this interface that does everything. It connects into everything, into your mail, into your calendar, into your Excel. It browses the web. It writes the code, etc. And these GPTs will allow you to create your own custom little things and use other people's GPTs that they make to sort of have these little agents, almost like your little bots that go around and complete those for you. And these GPT mentions seem like this is the beta for what they're doing. This is the thing that's going to put it all together. By the way, this is Mike Noop. So he's the co-founder of Zapier and he's the head of Zapier AI. Recently, he posted over 30% of Zapier employees now have AI zaps doing their stuff automatically for them. So as you can see here, there's this big leap in the beginning of 2023, where a lot more people decided to add various zaps and automations. He also gave some high ROI AI use cases internally. So this is kind of, I guess, what similar to what I just mentioned. So they're using it to automate HubSpot data entry after call. So as they call various prospects, I'm assuming, whether you call them or email or whatever, having AI assistance to do the data entry, to do the calendar appointments, et cetera, can save you quite a bit of time. At least that's how I'm interpreting this. I really wish this person would, I really wish he would specifically show use cases of how they're using it with, you know, the actual templates, because I would be very curious to see how they set this up. So for people that are not aware, so this is kind of what Zapier looks like. And it basically allows you to connect most of the things that you use, most of the software you use. They have 5,000 different tools set up, MailChimp, Gmail, Google Docs, Slack. For everything else, they have various webhooks you can use. And you can schedule it to run every hour, every day, every week, et cetera. So you can use it for customer support to automatically forward various customer support questions to Slack. And they've been recently pushing out more and more various improvements. So effective today, and this was this was about eight days ago, they're saying that using the, the following Zapier apps will no longer count towards your task usage. So kind of making them free, you can run them without paying per task. And you can build those things with this sort of dashboard canvas, as they call it. Now, I've done a number of videos on these various subjects, so I'll link them down below. And we're going to be doing more in the future that are kind of updated. So I'm not going to go too far into it now. But it's interesting to keep an eye on them because they are working with OpenAI is kind of like they've mentioned being a launch partner here. So Zapier AI Actions are launching alongside the GPT. So they are working together to make a lot of the stuff work. So if you want to see if you have it, I would check out your settings and beta. And in the beta features, you should see usually they pop up here before most of the people get it. And if you see something like GPT mentions, you can enable it. I'm currently not really seeing anything. Next on our list is Brave Leo, the AI browser assistant now features Mixtral for improved performance, which is a big win for open source stuff in general. So Mixtral is the open source model, or at least as they say it, open weights model. So they're much more open than a lot of the other ones, but they've released their Mixtral 8 times 7B, which is a mixture of experts model. And it is very good. Currently, probably one of the top open source models available. And now the AI assistant that Brave is using will be using Mixtro to handle the questions. So for people unfamiliar with Brave, this is brave.com. It's a privacy focused browser, has a lot of protections from various spying and cookies and ads, etc. It blocks trackers and ads, saves you time. It's backed by some big names in the Silicon Valley, and it even has these sort of crypto rewards that you get from browsing. It's really not a crypto thing, but they do have that for people that are interested. It's an interesting concept, but we'll see if that ever goes anywhere. And so if I type in Brave and Mixtro, it looks like I have an option to just do a web search or down here, Ask Leo, which is the AI assistant that they have. So Brave Leo is an AI smart assistant that can summarize web pages, transcribe videos, and answer questions. And they mentioned that they don't collect your IP address or personal data is not retained by them or any third party. Well, Leo's not off to a good start. So he's saying, I'm powered by Mixtro. Then he says to my question about Mixtro, he says, to answer your question, Mixtro, I don't know what that is. News about Jeff Bezos and perplexity. Perplexity is AI is another big AI search engine that's trying to step in the space. So it's not really getting what I'm trying to ask here, but it just launched. So I'm sure they're working to improve it rapidly. So after finishing recording that video, I had some more time to play around with this model a little bit, and I can't see where it would be very useful. I think the best use case for this is to use it strategically to summarize big web pages where you want to get the sort of context of the whole page without having to read through it. 
So you just have it open here on the right side. Once you hit the big web page, you hit summarize this page, and it does a very good job of summarizing that. It is also very good for summarizing smaller videos. So if you just go to like YouTube to watch a video, you're just able to go hit summarize this page and it will give you a summary. The summary is pretty good, although if the video is too long, it's going to have some issues with that. So it's better for shorter videos. It seems like maybe about five, six or seven minutes. That's kind of the top end of that. And then you can go back and forth and ask it follow up questions. However, the Mixtral model, if you want to use that, it's limited in how many prompts you can do per hour. You can always switch into Claude Instant or Llama 2 13B, but Claude and Mixtral are limited. If you wanted to increase your rate limits, you would have to upgrade to Leo Premium, which is $15 a month. But using this strategically to summarize pages every once in a while, you can do that for free and it seems to work very, very well. In other news, it looks like we can know when the LMs are lying. We find LMs exhibit different brain activity when they express their true beliefs versus when they lie. So it looks like this is honest neural activity versus dishonest neural activity, which, which if true, this means a big step forward for AI alignment, for AI safety. Turns out we can stimulate the brain regions responsible for honest behavior and suppress regions responsible for dishonest behavior. Wow. And with this understanding, we can build general lie detectors for LLMs. So you might have seen this yesterday. So this is the chatbot ranking arena where all the various chatbots kind of duke it out between each other to see who is the best. And yesterday we had a really interesting new entrant that started dominating the rankings. And that was Bard with Gemini Pro, which rocketed up beating out GPT-4, several of the GPT-4 models, only slightly behind GPT-4 Turbo. So this is Jerry Way from Google Brain and now at Google DeepMind. He's saying a lot of people may underestimate Google, but we have now shown that we can ramp up quickly and achieve superb results. Bard now versus Bard one year ago is such a stark difference. Some may even have counted Google out of the fight when Bard was first released, but now they should realize that Google is still in the game. Imagine what we can accomplish with another year. So since last I've looked, they haven't yet updated again. So they only have 3000 votes on Bard Gemini Pro. You know, it's compared to something like 30,000 votes for the GPT-4 Turbo. As each one of these are ranked against one another, people vote which one is better without knowing which one's which. So they have to base it purely on the responses, not knowing which model they're talking to. So I'm seeing some conflicting results from people. Some are saying that Bard is indeed much better, especially on coding tasks. Some people are doing side-by-side -side comparison with these two saying that this doesn't look right. And we don't quite yet know if we're comparing apples to apples because if Bard is sort of searching the web for answers, et cetera, you know, the question is how good of a comparison is that to the rest of the models here that may or may not be doing that. So stay tuned because I think once this gets updated, first of all, we're going to get a lot more data. A lot more people are going to try this out. If you want to try it out yourself, just Google chatbot arena and you'll be able to play around with this and see which one you like best and, you know, cast a few votes to see which one works better for you with your particular prompts. Google and Hugging Face team up. We covered this in a previous video. This could help Hugging Face, which is an open source AI platform, just have a wider reach. And then there's this, introducing Morpheus One, the world's first multimodal generative ultrasound transformer designed to induce and stabilize lucid dreams. Available for beta users spring 2024. So this AI thing is going to help you become better at lucid dreaming. So lucid dreaming is the idea that you know, kind of sort of realizing that you're in a dream while you're dreaming and being able to control it and do various things within that dream, which I got to say, I mean, if this is true and it doesn't mess with your brain, doesn't mess your brain up in some way, if it can just sort of wake you up within your dream so that you're able to remember it better and maybe interact with things in the dream, be the lead role in your very own sort of action sequence movie and control everybody else. I mean, that could be very interesting. So I'll link this video. The person goes deep into how they are trying to accomplish this. Looks like beta users will be starting in spring 2024. So we're not that far away. So I don't know if I want to be the first, one of the first people to be using this, but I'm certainly going to be watching this with great anticipation and seeing where this leads. And if it looks legit, if it looks safe, I feel like I would certainly try it. What about you? Would you put on some device that stimulates certain regions of your brain that helps you do lucid dreaming? Or is that a hard no? Let me know in the comments. Prometheus stole fire from the gods. We will steal dreams from the prophets. Whatever else, I like the whole theme they have going here. Free your mind and all that. 
name is Wes Drop. Thank you for watching.